Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan with EDB here, and I'm gonna do another list of the most powerful subwoofers on the market. Um, one thing to take in consideration, a lot of this list is based off just the RMS of the subwoofer, and this list is a lot more extensive than my last one, so it's gonna have a lot more subwoofers, and everything might not be in perfect order of what I think, so I mean, if you wanna move these subwoofers around um, how you want them, you'd go ahead. I'm not gonna care, again, if I missed any, or you think something else should be on the list, let me know. Um, one thing we should talk about again is uh, powerful subwoofers. I mean, everything has a unique situation where it could be more powerful than another subwoofer on this lift. Like, not everyone's going to be able to fit a 33 inch subwoofer into a vehicle. Um, some subwoofers, free air residents, might make them to where they don't play as good at another frequency. Um, ported box, sealed box. There's so many things that can affect the output of a subwoofer. But let's get into this. This list long, so I'm gonna try to power through it kinda quick. Um, first thing I'd like to mention is the, this is kind of an honorable mention, but it's a PSI audio. And if you wanna customize a subwoofer and make something how you want it, go ahead. Um, the, this company will do it for you. They make up to a 4,500 watt RMS sub starting at $850 and there's custom add-ons, custom paints. You can make them look however you want. It's a really cool company. I'd recommend checking them out. That's PSI Audio. Um, the first one I have on this list actually is the JLW, I mean 17, um, gosh, 13W7. And it's at 1500 watts RMS, yeah, starting pretty low on this one. But the reason I put this one on here is the JL Anniversary Series 13 inch subwoofer is super efficient, but does cost you $1,300. So, I mean, that's pretty big. Next list, uh, next subwoofer on the list, ugh, I'm struggling right now, is the REE Audio XXX or the MT Series. The reason I have both of them is I actually found the RMS of the XXX Series, 2000 watts. Just not bad, great subwoofer, great efficiency, will get the job done for what you need. It's at $650, the MT series is at $800, and I could not find anything for the RMS, but it is RE Audio's SPL subwoofer, so I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty good. Next subwoofer on the list is the Crescendo Contralto series, 2500 watt RMS, and It'll get the job done. It's gonna set you back $480, which is not bad, but it's a good subwoofer for the price. And Crescendo is known for making really high quality stuff, so I think it's probably worth taking a look at. Next on the list is the American Bass VFL Comp. Um, I had American Bass HDs, and they were wonderful subwoofers. The VFL Comp, they show between 2,000 and 10,000 watt RMS. I'm guessing they're probably for daily uses. Gonna be around 4K to 3K RMS. Nothing too special, but all in all, I really enjoyed my HDs, and I'm sure the VFL comps are just as cool better. <laughs> um, next on the list is Incriminator Audio, and they're w way more well known for their amplifiers. If you want some crazy amplifiers, definitely check out Incriminator Audio. But the Warden Series subwoofer is a 3,500 watt RMS sub, and I'm not sure about the price. They're more of a local dealer. You're going to have to find a dealer to figure out what the price of the sub is. Next sub I have on my list is a Pioneer, believe it or not, and it's the Premier, the SPL 8000 series, which is an 8000 watt max subwoofer and an SPL rating of 3000 watts. There has been a 180 decibel build with uh, the Premier, and it is pretty much impossible to find one of these subwoofers anymore. Like, you can, I'm not sure what the price is. I saw one sell on eBay for $800, but that was back in 2014, so. If you stumble across one, it might be worth picking up if you're looking at a good SPL subwoofer. Next on my list is the Rockford Fosgate um, T3 19 inch subwoofer. It's a 3000 watt um, RMS, good sub, good efficiency, but it's gonna set you back $2,500, so a little bit pricey. And now we're going into the, sorry, I'm looking at my list. Um, Atomic Series Extinction Level Event, or the Apocalypse XX. They show between a 2,000 to 10,000 watt RMS, but again, I'm probably guessing probably around three to 4,000 watts on these subs. Just because when they give a wide list like that, I know if you're running probably that 10,000 watt RMS peak, it's probably not putting out, well, it's, not, it's putting out the power. It is, I don't think it will be able to handle it for a daily use, a daily driver scenario at 10,000 watts. Next on the list, we have the Crossfire 4,000 watt, the SP4, uh, 
subwoofer and it's an SPL series for crossfires, 4000 watt RMS, so we're starting to get up there a little bit. And they have it listed at 4000 watts, but uh, I mean, it's a 4-inch voice coil, I think it can probably handle more than that. Um, I've had people say 8K on them, so in other words, really well-built subwoofer. They're a Y38 um, material, and again, it's a local seller, so you're going to have to find a dealer to purchase an X-Fire subwoofer, or maybe there is some online dealers, but I struggle to find them. Um, we're moving on to the MTX Jackhammer, and no, I'm not talking about the 24-inch subwoofer. I decided to exclude that from my list because people did not like it, but I mean, it's a good subwoofer, the 24-inch. It's gonna put out some serious numbers. It's just super expensive, and there's plenty of other good options that would do a lot better in the situation. But I'm actually talking about the new series. It's not out yet, but it's the Jackhammer 10K, and it is a, 3,000, shoot, 3,500 watt, I believe, subwoofer. Maybe just 3,000 watt subwoofer, but it is MTX's new SPL subwoofer. They finally are going back into the SPL series a little bit, but yeah, that's the MTX Jackhammer 10K. Um, next is Fi Audio, and they have a Neo, Neo series at 2,500, and then a Team Series Ferris Magnet at 4,500 watts RMS. Um, Again, I don't have prices on those. Those are ones you're gonna have to go find, check out, find a dealer, or delve into the internet a little bit more than I did. Um, but all in all, this is the first company that I showed two subwoofers with. Don't worry, there's gonna be quite a bit more. The next one on the list is the DC Level 6, again, from my last list. And it is a 4,500 watt RMS subwoofer and a price of $904.99. All in all, good subwoofer, good price, and worth taking a look at. Um, and then one, this one I probably got the most people, other than one other one, which I'll mention later on, but the Steve Mead's design subwoofer, um, I had a hard time, I couldn't find any pricing for the subwoofer. I actually looked quite a bit into this one because so many people were calling me out on it, which thank you, I, I appreciate that. But it is a 5,000 watt subwoofer, 15 inches, 112 pounds, huge subwoofer, crazy looking magnet and Steve Mead does good quality stuff, so I'm assuming a subwoofer is probably pretty good too. Um, next on the list, I have the HCCA Orion, and there I talked about the uh, SPL versions of 5,000 watt, 10,000 watt max, and is a good subwoofer. Another thing though I heard, there are some rumors of Orion coming out with a Beast subwoofer at 15,000 watts RMS, which would be crazy to see, I'd love to see it. Next, we're going down to the Sundown team. We have the 5,000 watt 18 inch subwoofer from Sundown, and on top of that one I should have mentioned in the other list, but for some reason I didn't, is the Neo series. And I'm not sure you can get it set towards a musical standpoint or an SPL standpoint. Um, the team series is going to set you back $1,699, and the Neo series will set you back $1,669. You can find this on the EMF Audio website. Next subwoofer I have on my list is the Soundstream XXX 10K subwoofer, and it's a 10K RMS subwoofer. Some some places have it rated at 8,500 watts RMS, some places at 10,000 watts RMS, so I'm not sure what to think. I wasn't able to find one for sale. It is a discontinued subwoofer, but you know, they're floating around, looking cardio farms, friends might have them. You could run into one of these subwoofers for sure. Another subwoofer I have on this list is the Kicker Solo X. And I sat in a truck with four of these, putting out 168, 69 decibels, and it was the craziest thing I've listened to so far. So I do have quite a bit of respect for these subwoofers. They're 5,000 watt RMS, and also, again, one of those impossible to find subwoofers. They've been discontinued, but again, look for them a little bit. They'll show up. They're pretty crazy. I've also heard Kicker might be coming out with uh, a new series of the Solo X sometime in the future, but just rumors, nothing concrete yet. Going down to the Earthquake Holy S, a 7,000 watt subwoofer, 15 inches. Um, Great, powerful, great cooling, old, kind of an old school subwoofer, but it'll get the job done still. And that's gonna set you back $1,299. And then we get into the B2 with the X2C. They have a 24 inch, if you're feeling like a larger subwoofer, 5,000 watt RMS. And actually coming out in May is the Neo series at, 
They have a deal that shows for two Neo series and an amp for a 15K setup. So I'm gonna say a 7,500 watt RMS, which would be really nice for a Neo sub with how efficient Neo subs are getting. Next on the list is Digital Designs, finally coming in. And they have the 9900 series if you're looking for a ferrous magnet. And that's a 2,500 watt RMS subwoofer and that's gonna set you back for the largest size, so this is the most expensive 9900 series, is $1,499. And then there's the Digital Design Z Series Z3. And I was actually going to call them today, but it is Sunday and they're closed to get a pricing on the Z Series. But I've been told it's over $2,000, so that's what you're looking at as a sub for over $2,000. But mind you, yes, Craig Butler, I messed this up last time. It's not 182 watts, it's a 182 decibel system on. For these uh, Digital Design Z series, and he used Incriminator Audio amps. Again, great amps from that company. And now we're getting to the big boys. We have Alfred Audio with the Death Bounce making a comeback. Now they have Neo series that are at 8,000 watts RMS. They have an 18 inch and a 32 inch subwoofer. And I had people trying to call me out saying a 32 inch subwoofer does not have the same surface area as three 12 inch subwoofers because, you know, 12, 24, 36, 36 bigger than 24. You gotta remember there's gaps in there and on top of that there's actually about seven, you can fit seven 12 inch subwoofers in the 32 inch subwoofer, surface area wise. You'd have to like cut them apart and like paste them in there, but yeah. But yeah, 8,000 watt subwoofer and that's gonna set you back around, where am I at here? That's gonna set you around $4,999 for the 18 or $7,500 for the 32 inch subwoofer and very impressive subwoofers. Next, this was the company that people read me on that I missed. And I'm a little upset with myself because I did miss it. And I haven't heard about them before and I appreciate people telling me it is Pride Audio and they have the UFO series the Neo subwoofer at a 10,000 watt RMS rating. And I actually contacted them and they said, yes, you can run this daily at 10,000 watts. So, I mean, that's impressive, and that's at 2,250 euros, or in the US, $2,384. Mind you, that's gonna change because the euro fluctuates with the cost of a dollar, so it could cost more, it could cost less, depending on when you buy it. Um, next, we are at Pierce Audio. This was another brand that I got a little bit of crap for missing, and I've never heard of these guys. And they make a 12K series amp of 12,500 watts, and the thing is, at that range, the smallest subwoofer you can get is 21 inches because they use a 6 inch voice coil and a giant spider, which is downright insanity. And the most expensive one on that list, I believe, is a 24 inch. Could be bigger, might be bigger. Um, that's $2,400. And a little bit pricey, but for 12,000 watts RMS, that's, yeah, I'd say that's well worth it. And now, coming to the end of the list, um, Ground Zero. And they have the Plutonium series, which is their SPL version, which they recommend for a daily use of 6,000 watts RMS or 10,000 watts in that range. Between 6 and 10,000 watts RMS, you can run daily. And then they have their big boy subwoofer, and that is the Germinator. It's a German company, so I mean, name kind of fits pretty well. And they have a 33-inch subwoofer that's rated up to 15,000 watts. And that is available. You can buy that. Again, it's a local dealer. If I didn't mention prices on a lot of these, it's either because I forgot what they were and couldn't find them anymore because they've changed or discontinued the subwoofer, or it's a local dealer. But anyways, guys, sorry this video is getting a bit long, but that is what I have listed down for the most powerful subwoofers of 2017 so far. There is going to be more releasing. I know EMF Audio, the V2, is coming out. Did I completely skip over EMF Audio? I don't know. EMF Audio has Ermai Gerd V2 at 6,500 watts RMS at $1,250. And YOLO has their subwoofer. I mean, EMF YOLO at $974. Both are Neo subs. Both are really good. And it's a good company. Um, but I miss those. And, or went over it twice, I'm sorry, but I just feel like I totally missed the EMF audio, and I have one of their subwoofers, so, don't know. But again, um, thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for letting me know, because there's like at least three or four companies that I did not know just put out like incredible subwoofers. And um, 
it's good to know. Um, again, I'm sorry if I missed your favorite subwoofer. If you're a big Boss Audio fan, you should probably reconsider your life choices because they're everything they make, other than maybe their decks, are really subpar. Um, again, though, this is a lot off of power rating, how much power they can take. Subwoofer efficiency is huge. Um, port tuning is huge. If you can port tune to the resonant frequency of your car, you're going to get twice the FPL as if you're port tuning to make a really low, this like, hair tricks car. It's, there's so much to go into it, so much to look at, and I just hope this video just, is kind of fun to make, and I hope you enjoy what I came up with for the most powerful subs. Hopefully you learned some new ones. And again, if I miss some, let me know. I'm probably gonna, I won't make a new list till 2018. And till then, I guess if you wanna subscribe, I'm gonna put a big three in my Mustang, um, a new battery, and I'll be ready to run my EMF audio at 1600 watts RMS on NS1 in the summer coming up pretty soon. So yeah, stay tuned.